Good morning guys, welcome to today's lesson on squaring and cube roots with factor trees. Now this comes as a special request from Chelsea, but I'm certain there's I mean, a lot of people out there who, um, who, who need some help with this. Okay, so um, basically in order to, to be able to do these questions, you, know, you need to know how to do um, factor trees and, and write numbers as a product of their prime factors. There is a couple of lessons on that, so if you're not sure, please go back and have a look at that. So what we're going to be looking at, uh, we'll start off with, our first example is a very um, easy number, 100. Now hopefully you already know that the square root of 100, okay, the square root of 100 um, equals 10. Now we get that from this. 10 squared we know to be 100 because 10 times 10 is 100. Okay, remember if we multiply a number by itself, that means it's squared. So we hopefully also note that the square root sign and the square sign cancel each other out. Okay, so the whole aim of this activity is I want to somehow have 10 squared or 10 times 10. They're the two things I'm looking for because automatically once I have those two things I can either get rid of the squared number or I can get rid of one of those times tens and I'm left with my answer. So let's have a look. Now probably the most uh, usual breakdown of 100 would be 10 times and 10 and 10. And then you might think, oh hold on, wasn't my aim to get 10 times 10? And it was. So you could write here equals 10 times 10 or 10 squared. And then you could simply write the answer from that that the square root of 100 equals 10. So that's like very easy, and you think, okay, that's not too hard. But what happens if, when I break it down, we don't have 10 times 10? We know that when we break the number down to a product of its prime factors, there can be lots of different ways to do that. So let's look at another way. Let's look at um, 20 and 5. You could look at 50 and 2, lots of different ways. Okay, so 5 is a prime number. 20 keeps going. 4 times 5, or 10 times 2, lots of different ways, and 4 is 2 times 2. Okay, so we've come down to the number, so we get 100 is equal to, in this case it's 2 times 2, and 5 times 5. Now you might like to rewrite that if you wished as 2 squared times 5 squared. Now obviously in this case, the two numbers, the 2 and the 5, are not the same, but you'll notice we've got little squares there. Now up in that top example, we said we can take the square root sign and the square sign away because they cancel each other out. So if I'm looking for the square root of 100, then that square root sign disappears with the two square signs. We can just rub those all twos out. And now we're left with simply 2 times 5, and what is 2 times 5? 10. Look at that. It's the same number. Okay. Other people do it a little bit differently. Instead of writing it out as, you know, having once you have that 2 times 2 and that 5 times 5, we know we want to have the same number there. So what they actually do, they pair numbers up. We've got 1, 2, and a 5, which is identical to the other side. So we've got a 2 and a 5. And then we've got another 2 and a 5. And we can actually times them together to make our 10 times 10. And look, that's what we're looking for up here, that 10 times 10. We can just get across one of them out. And look, our answer is 10. So look, there's two completely different ways. I'd probably like the first way here better, okay? Um, because it's simply a matter of crossing out the little um, square signs and then multiplying whatever's left. Um, but lots of different ways. So we're going to look at uh, two more squares and then we'll look at one cube. Okay, so let's have a look at a slightly bigger number now. Again, you might want to pause this and have a go at the question first. Up to you. So we're going to look for, oops, not 222, sorry, 225. We're going to look for. Okay, so to start off with, I'm going to do my factor tree. Now, hopefully, you'll remember with 225, any number that um, ends in a 5, that 5 is divisible. 
So I'm going to put a 5 there, and we know that 5 is a prime number. Now, a quick way to do this, I'm going to do what we call short division. Okay, how many 5s go into 2? Well, none. How many 5s go into 22? Well, 4 do. 4 5s are 20, so we've got a little 2 left over. How many 5s are in 25? Well, 5 5s are 25. And look at that, we've got our number there. Now, 45 isn't prime because we know that 5 is divisible again. So let's put another 5 there. 5 times what makes 45? Well, 5 9s are 45. 9 breaks down into 3 and 3. And again, this is one way to break it down. There's lots of different ways. You can divide the number by 3 and work it that way as well. Okay, but I'm down to one prime factors. So we're going to rewrite that as a product of its prime factors. So 225 is equal to 5 times 5 and 3 times 3. Alternatively, and you may have done this straight away, you might have written down 5 squared times 3 squared. And hopefully you'll think, hold on, didn't we have to get the little squares so then we could cancel them out? And that is certainly true. The square root of 225 we cancel them out by getting rid of the square, the square, little squares and then we're simply left with 15. Look at that, we've got my answer. Alternatively, you could have said, well, we've got a 5 and a 3. I'll put a line here. We could have said we got a 5 and a 3 and we've got another 5 and a 3. So it equals 15 and a 15. Therefore, the square root of 225 is simply 15. So lots of different ways, and you might start getting really getting the hang of this and just notice that the 5 and the 3 are the same from there, and straight away just say, well, it's going to be 15. Okay, let's have a look, look at the next one. We're going to do the number 900 this time. So again, pause it this time. See if you can actually answer this question for me, and then check the answer. Okay, hopefully you've done this. So, let's start breaking down 900, lots and lots of different ways. I'm actually going to use this time, we're going to use um, hmm, 9 and 100. You could use 3 and 300, you could use a 90 and 10, lots of different ways. So, 9 breaks down with 3 and 3, and look, they're both prime, that's nice. 100 breaks down to 10 and 10. Hold on. Let's just pause here for a moment. Now, I know this isn't a product of its prime factors, but remember we said the whole idea was to get um, two numbers that had little squares on them. Let's have a quick look. 900 equals 3 times 3 and equals 10 times 10, which is a 3 squared times 10 squared. Well, that's what we were doing last time, wasn't it? Let's get rid of the little squares. 3 times 10 is 30. Wow. Well, hopefully that actually is correct. Let's see, though. Let's say we didn't stop at the 10 times 10, and we actually went down to the prime factors. Well, 10 is 5 and 2, and 10 is 5 and 2. So let's now write it as a product of its prime factors, and let's just see if that, that method, first method worked out. So we've got 3 times 3, we've got 2 times 2, and we've got 5 times 5 which again, you may well have just written this down straight away, 3 squared times 2 squared times 5 squared. Notice they have all have little squares on them. So let's rub those squares out, rub those squares out, and rub those squares out, because remember we're finding the square root. And let's multiply. 3 times 2 is 6, 6 times 5 is 30. Wowza, look at that the same answer. So sometimes you might be working through your factor tree and actually realize that you've already come to that answer. Okay? But again, you'll find in math there's lots of different ways to do things. Now we're going to do one last question. Okay, so this will be example four. Okay, we're going to do look for this time the cube root. Now remember the cube root, it looks like the square root sign. Now, sometimes we put a little 2 for square root, but we don't have to. But when we're doing cube root, we must put a little 3 in there. We're going to find the cube root of 512. So remember, cube root, like the square root, we're looking for, but this time, instead of having numbers like, I think we looked at the 10 times 10, 
we want to have the same number multiplied by itself three times. So if we looked at, for example, the cube root of 8, which hopefully you know is 2, that's because 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. So like the square root, we're looking for, but this time, three numbers like that, or 2 to the cube, 2 to the power of 3. That's what we're aiming for. So let's break 512 down to a product of its prime factors. Again, you might want to pause this and have a go at it yourself. Now this is a pretty big number, and there are lots of different numbers that you could probably try to devise by, but hopefully remember if it ends in a 2, then it must be divisible by 2, and 2 is a prime number, so we're going to use that one. Now a quick way, again, I'm going to use short division. How many 2's are in 5? Okay, well there are 2 2's are in 5, and 1 left over. How many 2's are in 11? Well, 2 times 5, so 5 of them is 10, and then 1 left over. How many 2's are in now 12? 2 times 6 is 12. Again, if you're not sure what I did there, okay, or I halved it basically, but go back to that video and have a quick look. Okay, 256 now I've got. Now again, I'm going to do 2 because that's a nice easy one. You might choose a different number. How many 2's are in 2? They're all 1. How many 2's are in 5? Well, 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, so it's 2 of them and 1 left over. How many 2's are in 16? Well, there are 8. Again, I'm going to go down 2 I'm doing a slow way this time. You could have done 4, which might, might be better. How many 2's are in 1? Well, there are none. How many 2's are in there in 12? Well, there are 6. How many 2's are there in 8? There are 4. And then you might come down to 64 and say there are, you might to do 8, 8 times 8. I'm going to do 2 again, just because that's what we've been doing. Um, 2 goes into 6 3 times, 2 goes into 4 2 times. And then, oh, I'm running out of room here, aren't I? Okay, um, let's do two bigger ones now. We'll do um, 4 and 8. And then 2 and 2. And then 4 and 2. Sorry about this and 2 and 2, okay. Kind of ran out of room there. Now obviously you can see, because I've devised by 2 the whole time, my tree is huge. Okay, it's huge. You might have used numbers like 4s and that type of stuff, that or 12s or whatever, okay, that might have helped you. Okay, now we've got a lot of 2s here, so let's have a look, let's break the number down. So we've got 5, 1, 2 equals, let's count them this time. Instead of doing 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, let's count them. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We've got 9 of them. Okay, so I could do 2 to the power of 9, but obviously that's not going to help me because I want 2 to the power of 3. Huh. So let's break the number down to what we had before. So we've got a 2 times 2 times 2. That's 3 of them. 2 times 2 times 2. That's another 3 of them. And 2 times 2 times 2. That's another 3 of them. That means there's 9 of them. But look what I've done. Remember we said we want to have th things in cubes multiplied by itself 3 times. So I've actually got 2 cubed times... 2 cubed times 2 cubed or 3 things multiplied together which are exactly the same. What is 2 cubed? Well, 2 times 2 times 2 which is 8 and then 8 and then 8 and that's what I wanted, wasn't it? Look, 2 times 2 times 2 for the cube root of 8 and I got 8 times 8 times 8 three things that are multiplied together which are exactly the same therefore the cubed root of 512 is that magic number of 8 remember we could have written this as 8 cubed as well and cut them off wowza that's pretty tough look look I suggest you try to stick with the square roots to start off with when you start feeling comfortable have a go at those cubed root questions. Okay. What I might actually do, I might just look at one last example. I know I said I wasn't going to. Okay. But I just want to make sure you definitely got the uh, 
the cube root down part. So I'm going to look at a, a much easier one. Um, this is EG5, I think. Okay, so we're just going to look at a nice easy one, a cube root of 27. Okay, I should probably should look at this first, but it's okay. Let's break it down. You should be able to do this very quickly now. Okay, 3 times 9 is 27. Prime. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 3 times 3 equals 3 to the power of 3. And look, from the last question, we know we simply opposite a cubed root. Oops, that was the not. Cubed root of um, 27 is simply 3. Or 3 times 3 times 3. They're all the same. We're left, left with 3. So the cube root of 27 equals 3. Okay. I know I probably should have done that the first one. That's okay. Hopefully you understood that. Again, practice the square roots first. If you feel comfortable, go to the cube roots. If you still think I'm talking nonsense, let me know and I'll do a separate one for the cube roots because I know it's pretty tough. Okay. Again, try this without a calculator. Um, your division is very important, particularly with your cubes and your square roots, because with big numbers, you need to know what, what they're breaking down to. So I suggest you practice that as well. And if you're a little bit unsure with your division, have a look at the lesson or again, ask me in class. Hope this made sense, particularly to you, Chelsea, um, but to everybody else who watches this throughout the wide, big wide world, I hope this made sense. If it doesn't please let me know if there's any other particular videos that you want me to put up and this is for anybody across the world please let me know and i'll do one for you cheers guys